Okay, so let's start the uh, lecture. So uh, now in this chapter, we will learn about the uh, audio processing. As I mentioned previously, we have uh, the previous chapter uh, in image processing already complete. So now we are mo moving to the audio processing. So later on, we will have another, I think, two chapter in video processing. Okay. So uh, let me repeat a, a bit. Uh, uh, anyhow, uh, at the end of the day, the multimedia is, I mean, uh, the multimedia that we learn uh, in this subject is meant to interact with human being. So uh, the, the explorations or the way the uh, a multimedia, no matter its image, uh, audio or video being processed uh, would be uh, in conjunction to human being because the main uh, purpose is to interact with human being. But if you want, I mean, if the audio, video, or image is being uh, processed, I mean, it's intended to read by the machine, uh, sort of machine vision and etc. So the message, uh, I mean, the way the multimedia being compressed, being processed will be a bit different. So always remember this one. But nonetheless, uh, uh, it, 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 anyhow, eventually in machine vision, AI, deep learning, or eventually uh, those for human interactions, the process would be more or less the same, would be more or less the same, okay? So, but nonetheless, uh, uh, to exploit the, the, especially in terms of compressions, uh, no matter video compression, audio compression, or image compressions, the main audience still remain as human being. So we have a lot of, uh, I mean, the way we perform the image compression, audio compression, or video compression uh, would be specifically target the limitation of humans. For example, the limitation of uh, the ear, limitation of the eye, the sight, and etc. Okay. So uh, in last lecture, we already uh, mentioned, I mean, we already introduced some, uh, we have analog, we have analog and also digital. Let me get a clean screen first. We have two different types of uh, data, which is analog and digital. So for analog, we are actually, um, in analog, we have the data in continuous because uh, anyhow, uh, audio and video is sort of uh, time dependence, which means uh, you need a specific time period of time in order to understand a message. Uh, for example, your WhatsApp call, your video call, and et cetera. You, you, you cannot understand all the message within a very single uh, millisecond or second. Okay, so that is why you call this is, this is as a time dependence multimedia. So we have two different formats, which is in analog and digital. But in order for us to process the data, we need to convert it to digital. So the conversion here in is, um, would be very, very similar to the DCT, DFT, and DWT, whereby uh, when you perform the conversion to analog to digital, we are actually approximating the original analog data. Okay, all the data that we exploit, I mean, uh, using the DSLR to snap the picture. Actually, we are converting the image uh, from analog to digital. The uh, analog image, which is the real image, the natural image, and then after we uh, perform the uh, image acquisition, or sometimes we call it as image imaging. Uh, for example, you know, you in inject some uh, radioactive uh, solution of fluids in your body, and then you go for MRI or go for CT. Actually, the CT or MRI is actually detecting the radioactive fluids. Okay, if you did not inject anything, uh, you go for MRI, you will get nothing. La. You get nothing because they are, the MRI is actually tracing the radiative component in your blood flow. Okay, so that is why it is advisable uh, not to have MRI and CT scan uh, more than twice in every half year because all the radiative items or atoms or maybe molecules, they have their own half-life. Okay, so that is why uh, the half-life is never end. Uh, it's just that it is significant or negligible, that's all. Half-life never ends because you divide something with two, uh, never get zero. Uh, okay, maybe the value is negligible, that's all. Okay, so that is, um, okay. So uh, in terms of analog and digital, when we trying to process, I mean, we convert things from analog to digital, digital we are enabling, I mean, uh, all the all different types of algorithm being uh, implemented in the digital world, okay? So it's very important for us to call, convert from analog to digital so that we gain a lot of flexibility uh, to manage our data and etc. But when we perform a conversion for analog to digital, uh, 
it's inevitable that there would be loss. As I mentioned last time, uh, in order to perform the conversion for another di digital, for example, you have a sine wave, not a sine wave, but a bell shape. Right? So whenever you perform the conversions, because the conversions uh, in digital would be always discrete, but uh, the analog data would be always in continuous. So when you perform the conversion, perhaps you can get something very, very similar, but you will still encounter loss at this gap, loss of information. So that is why when you convert something, uh, that is why when you speak, I mean, through the uh, telephones, when you speak from one end and the receiver from another end to listen, your voice will be a bit different. Nonetheless, you're still able to recognize that. Uh, but uh, you will found that it is still different from face-to-face, uh, -face, you know, talking in real. So that would be the loss uh, during the conversion ADC or DLC, okay? So, uh, but nonetheless, uh, uh, the conversion is uh, have to be done. If not, you cannot transfer your uh, message or voicemail through the bandwidth, this and that, okay? So uh, if the gap here is, I mean, if the loss is very great, uh, you might lose essential information. So that is why uh, sometimes uh, the performance of the earpiece, the mobile phone is really greatly rely on the ADC and DAC uh, conversion performance. Okay. So this would be, I mean, we will learn a bit on this one in terms of sampling. So uh, if you have sufficient sampling, you would able to approximate the original analog data. If your uh, sampling data is insufficient, uh, so you will not able to get the I mean, uh, original data. Either it's under sampling or over sampling, but usually it's under sampling. Lah, okay? Under sampling, which means uh, the digital data is not representing the original data. So for example, I have a bell shape and I only perform uh, two sampling data, for example, one, two, okay? Because the sampling of data, uh, for sure, the interval will be the same. So let's say you have two interval, lah, and this is the third, lah, one second, okay? So after you perform the sampling, I mean, conversion for analog to digital, you will able to get this line. And when you connect this line, you will get a straight line. So for sure, this data, even us are uh, not so professional, we are aware that this, both of the chart is totally different. Uh. One is a bell shape and one is only one line. So this is so-called the under sampling. When you have under sampling, you will no longer, the digital data that you obtain, that will no longer approximate the original data, okay? So this is, uh, there would be a name, uh, I, I think the name is being mentioned at the subsequent lecture. I mean, this lecture slide. Later on, I will mention it. Okay, so let us continue. Uh. Let me. So digital audio process means taking the real world sound signal to process so that the information can be displayed, analyzed and correct to another type of signal. So always remember the audio means the sound after digitization. So please do not uh, mention sound, uh, sound audio, no such thing. Uh, okay. It is actually a uh, uh, paling ter, something like that, uh, redundancy over there. Okay. So uh, audio and audio and sound is two different things. Audio is always referring to digital world and sound is uh, referring to analog, okay? So audio works involve production, manipulation, recording, and reproduction of sound only. So these are the basic instruments. So I have mentioned this one. So these are the basic um, audio editing software, uh, some for layman, some is for expert. But usually for expert, uh, the, you, they, uh, they may charge you the subscription fees. Uh. All sound waves are produced by vibrating objects which cause the air surrounding to vibrate. So that is why uh, in vacuum, we don't have any sound uh, can be transferred, okay? Because you don't have any molecule that allows you, uh, I mean, the, that allows vibration. So that is why in the uh, space or vacuum area, there is no sound, uh, that's all. Okay, so basically the transfer of sound, uh, the transmission of sound wave is actually, um, Vibration, as I mentioned just now, is actually the vibration of molecules. And it depends on how the vibration pattern is. So when there is a vibration, uh, of course, uh, this is not that simple, uh, but uh, we're not going to deep, I mean, uh, delve inside this uh, particular area. So I'm not going to explain in details uh, because um, 
if it is from uh, the perspective of biology, uh, it is no, it is, uh, and also physics, uh, it is not only the uh, mo vibration of molecules, uh, it's also involved the pressure and also velocity of the air movement. Okay, so that is why uh, sometimes, you know, when you go for a roller coaster, when you speak, you know, uh, those that sit behind you may not be able to listen what you are speaking, something like that. Because that would be uh, a lot of factor influencing uh, the pressure, the velocity, because the velocity, um, the velocity has a direct in, uh, impact on the pressure and the pressure has direct impact on the vibration. So that is why um, everything is correlated. Uh. But in to make it simple, uh, it is the vibrations. Uh, okay, so you have your own vibration patterns and these patterns is actually uh, can be visualized. I think previously there is one video, you know, uh, playing the speaker, you know, underneath the table and there's so a lot of sand on top of the table. And when the speaker play in difference, when the speaker play in a difference uh, rhythms, uh, the speaker is mouse underneath the table. So the sand display a different patterns over there. Uh. Actually the pattern is a uh, um, vibration frequency over there. Okay, so uh, some people are doing arts using this uh, so-called vibration arts. Uh. Okay, so basically the vibrations uh, is depicted by the you know, black color dots. Uh. So if the black color dots is very concentrated, uh, which means it is um, higher in frequency or higher in vibrations, and those that is uh, far apart would be a bit uh, low vibration sort of that. Uh. So when our ear, when our ear receive, I mean, in a specific area, uh, if your ear uh, receive so-called this A vibrates vibrations, uh, the eardrum will pick up all this vibration. And the pickup of this vibration is not simply just that, you know, uh, the movement of molecule. It involves the uh, air pressure around, surrounding air pressure. So that is why uh, uh, when you go to different elevations, uh, you know, you go for hiking, you go for a different elevation, when you dip down into the sea, below the sea level, the way uh, that you can listen is totally different because the change of the uh, ambient atmospheric uh, pressure. Okay, so this is uh, closely related. Uh, actually, a lot of things to, to mention here, uh, but this is not so important here. So the air vibrations will influence, I mean, that would uh, be a specific patterns. Uh, and these patterns can be described as what you listen right now. For example, now I'm speaking and the vibration here actually can be uh, described by using uh, the, you know, you can measure the vibration patterns and from the vibration pattern, you can generate a signal wave. And from the signal wave, you can actually, uh, let me draw. And from this signal wave, uh, you can actually, uh, you know, apply low pass filter, high pass filter and remove some of the ambient noise. For example, the construction noise, you can remove the construction noise and then retain only a particular portion of noise. Or not noise uh, of a um, audio or signal wave uh, so so that you can have so called the uh, uh, noise cancellations you know all the noise cancellation features from your device it is actually applying something like that because uh, you can actually recall and correlate with the image processing uh, uh, all those noise are high frequency information right so basically if you want to remove the noise you can actually remove part of the high frequency information. So the same thing apply in audio processing. So because the noise is, you know, always in a very spiky conditions. So in order to apply a uh, super high pass and low pass filter, so you can actually remove part of the noise. So uh, how effective is this? Is the noise cancellation, uh, sorry, is the filter, uh, is how good is your noise cancellation feature and how expensive is the device? That is the, that is the correlation over there. Okay, because optimizing, uh, to perform noise cancellation or uh, ambience noise cancellation is easy, but to get an optimized noise cancellation is very difficult. You can easily uh, ignore, you know, uh, okay, uh, oh, for example, a COVID patient, uh, you can, oh, okay, wow, you look like COVID, uh, go up, okay. You can easily do something like that, but it is not optimized. In order to optimize, you need a specific procedure to determine how do you know characterize this is COVID, this is non-COVID, something like that. So the same thing here, especially for those, uh, uh, I mean, the, those signal, which is 
spiky and when I speak in a, a higher pitch, but then the ambience noise is around that one, uh, around that pitch level. So if in case the uh, earpiece or the device or the audio device remove that particular piece, uh, uh, all the information or all the uh, I mean signal that I speak just now would be lost. So that is uh, very crucial. Uh, so that is um, how they play around with the um, filter and etc. Okay, so the human ear operate by sensing pressure vibration above and below the atmospheric pressure. So the process is as follow. A sound wave entering the ear canal exerting ex exerts a fluctuating fluctuating pressure on the side on one side of the eardrum, and the air in another side of eardrum is at atmospheric pressure. Basically, um, if nothing special, uh, everything is in atmospheric pressure. Uh. If it is not in atmospheric pressure, you will see things moving. For example, you will have you know you will have a door. Uh, let me put the door left and right. Okay, if this atmospheric pressure uh, I mean, at the right hand side, the atmospheric pressure is greater, so this door will be pushed towards the left hand side and vice versa. So, left, right. If the atmospheric pressure here is greater, so you push the door towards the right hand side. So, if everything uh, is not in atmospheric pressure, you will see things moving around because the pressure is pushing the uh, uh, sort of force uh, to push the things around. Okay. So, the pressure difference on two sides sets the drum in the motion because uh, you have your uh, you can observe this as uh, I mean you can see this as the eardrum uh. so because the pattern is keep on fluctuating uh, you know uh, inner ear and outer ear outer ear so because the out you have a you have a specific patterns here and the and for example the atmospheric pressure is here and the pressure here sometimes higher, sometimes lower, sometimes higher, sometimes lower. So we'll cause this eardrum to, you know, vibrate left and right, something like that. So this is how the vibration being occur. Okay. So uh, the eardrum so vibrate in the same patterns as per the source. Then this oscillation is finally transmitted to a fluid field in the ear. The philosophy will be the same. Like. The motion of the fluid disturb the hair cell in the inner ear and then transmit uh, impulse to a brain to the brain with the information that sounds is present. So the impulse is actually uh, connected by, I think it's NA, uh, NA and CL. So, sort of, I forgot right here. But there will be a sort of impulse, uh, just like the electricity. So human ear depends on frequency and intensity. The frequency range that is audio, audible to human is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And the frequency range of the voice is typically only 500 hertz to four kilohertz. So this would be the uh, limitation of human ear uh, whereby similar to the chart in the eyesight. Uh. Okay, so you have a frequency here and you have an intensity here. So intensity, the y exit will be the loudness and the frequency uh, will be the x exit. So this would be the patterns, uh, okay. And uh, you can observe here there is a threshold of pain, which means uh, if the loudness of, I mean the loudness uh, of the of any sound wave uh, is greater than than this point at this particular frequency, you will feel painful. Okay, but this is still uh, subjective to people uh, because some might be more resilient, some might be more sensitive. So, but then anyhow the pattern will be more or less around that. So this would this is the threshold of pain, and area of sound, music, speech. Okay, so any sound wave uh, is below this region uh, would be inaudible, uh, which means uh, you can, even though they are present of sound, uh, you still cannot be listened. Okay, uh, for example, the, uh, the, 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 the frequency that sent by uh, the insect, uh, between insect, that they, they, sort of frequency sent over there, but it's very high pitch or very low pitch either way. So we are unable to listen that, that area, uh, okay, would be in this area. So this is uh, just the same, uh, but you know, illustrate using different uh, figure. So uh, the sound pressure would be the loudness, and it is in dB, and this is the frequency. So limitation of human ear, lower limit threshold of audibility, upper limit threshold of pain or damage. 
the loudest sound human can tolerate is the is called the threshold of pain. So we have our uh, upper and lower limit. Uh, lower limit is that uh, that is a minimum or the silent. Uh, I mean beyond silent. Uh, uh, that you the ones can listen to. And upper limit would be the threshold of pain. If um, exceeding this limit, uh, the your you will feel pain in your ear and etc. Okay, so uh, I think there is one rules and regulation. Uh, if you have, if you have, uh, especially in workplace, uh, if you work in a very noisy condition or sort sort of construction area or some some area uh, which involve high uh, noise pollutions, so you can only expose to a specific range. For example, 20 second, uh, sorry, 20 minutes and etc. Then you need to leave that area for 15 minutes and continue your work. So that is the reason why uh, we have uh, routine work, especially in construction area. Uh, but uh, I also aware that many is not complied to that as well as well. Uh, okay. Um, because you want money, right? So yeah. <clears throat> Exchange with your help. Amplitude of sinusoidal waveform can be increased from threshold of audibility by a factor of approximate 10 power 6. 10 power 6 until the threshold of pain at approximate 120 dB. So basically in sound uh, or audio, uh, we are actually uh, uh, using dB. La. dB is the common SI unit. So this would be the dB um, starting from low to high. So let me check. Uh, so I already uh, mentioned everything. I think nothing much to explain here. La. So basically, um, if you if you have a very healthy um, hearing uh, system, uh, I don't think you can. I don't think one can hear someone breathing la, three meters away is quite far. Uh, for example, in scary movie, maybe uh, three meters away, you no know, breathing only. Okay. Um, yeah, but but uh, to be frank, uh, this would be the uh, this would be the uh, DB or the audibility of one uh, healthy human. Actually, you can listen to it like someone breathing. Okay, maybe very deep breath. I don't know. <laughs> Amplitude of sinusoidal with uh, this one radio repeat. Okay, analog sound analog sound signal. So the analog the sound's intensity has rise and fall shape, uh, known as sound envelope. So this would be a very common picture when it comes to audio. La. So you have a uh, very, you know, uh, how should I put it? Um, for example, you have, you know, sort of this one. Uh. But of course, this is, uh, actually, this is one line, uh, you know, but I draw like a uh, area over there. So all these are uh, actually known as sound envelope. These are actually uh, known as sound envelope. La. Okay. But I, th I don't think sound envelope is a very common word. So, uh, uh, maybe it's not my field. I'm not sure. Frequency. Frequency refer to the number of wave per second. Okay. So uh, the frequency would be one divided by t. Uh, uh, to get the hertz. Uh, and t is the period. Okay. So this is uh actually you if you did not remember the definitions for a specific, for example, frequency, uh, you can recall from the always recall from the equations. Uh, okay. Because one divided by t t is the period, ma. So a period is always calculated based on one second. So basically frequency will be the how many number of waves in one second. So measure is in hertz. The uh, music sound frequency characterized as the number of high and high to low pressure cycle in second, which is known as pitch. La. Pitch is also in hertz as well. Uh. The faster the sound wave vibrates, the higher the frequency. Okay, so if you have... um. Yeah, if, if the sound wave is faster to travel, uh, I mean, if let's say you have a fast sound wave and then followed by a slow sound wave, so that is um so called a frequency la. So that is um we can um, so that is the C ECG also la, our heart rhythms so. always like this. Okay, of course uh this is not uh Chin Chai draw uh, there is uh called uh PQRS wave over there. So uh yeah, pitch, pitch is the num a human perception of how high or low a sound appear to be. Um, pitch is pre pre primarily determined by frequency. Higher frequencies appear to have higher pitch, 
when play loudly. Okay, when play loudly, yeah. Consider there are two pure tones with the same amplitude but different frequency. One may sound louder than the other as the ear does not perceive sound at different frequency equally. Okay, so this uh, actually from here we can refer back to the to this to this chart. Uh. So if uh because the statement is that you have a same sound. So uh we look at this one. Uh. We have the same loudness. We let's say uh this one uh, the second line. Uh. We have the same loudness, but if played at different frequency, you will found that oh it's this. I mean you let's say you have a wave and b wave. So a wave is placed at five hundred, and b wave is played at maybe here, somewhere around here twenty kilo kilohertz is very high. So when you play this sound, uh, you will found that this one is audible. This is not audible, and in fact, uh, it may cause painful in your ear. That is because the uh, pitch is. This one is much higher, and this is much lower, and it's at, at least uh, audible, uh, audible. Uh. So that is why, uh, even though you have the same loudness, you may not, uh, I mean, the human may not able to um, perceive the same information or the same loudness. Oh, uh, actually, uh, audio uh, sound, sound wave A and B um, have the same loudness uh, because of different uh, frequency and also pitching. Uh, so the the loudness would be affected. So in particular, the ear is most sensitive to frequency between one kilohertz to five kilohertz at a normal sound volume level. But of course, this is uh, under the under the study of uh, I mean experimental study. Like I think it's in Bell's lab, uh, Nokia Bell's lab again. So uh, they invite a lot of different. I mean, many many different. Uh, participants to join the to join the experiment. So they actually give them, I mean, uh, play the uh, so-called an audio at different dB level, and then they ask a question, oh, can you listen something like that? And then later on, uh, from all the I mean uh, participants that tabulate a data, so-called, I think there's a name, uh, I will explain later on. Uh, I think I did include in the lecture notes. So that would plot out a chart. So that chart, they will refer to that particular chart to create the, uh, for example, what is the DB require for phone call? Because uh, I mean, last time uh, when you have the phone call, you know, something like this one, uh, the phone call, something like this one, uh, the voice, the, uh, the, the, the voice, the volume would be a bit different. It would be like a mechanical voice, like a robot voice, something like that. That is because they specifically um, transfer the, the input sound wave uh, to digital first and then compress to a specific frequency. Specific frequency. And this specific frequency is transferred through the bandwidth until the receiver. So that is why uh, you will be able to, uh, to listen, uh, to understand the message, but the voice, you know, the, the, the voice sounds like different, like a robot voice. Uh. So high frequency, Air molecule being packed together more densely increase air pressure. So still increasing the air pressure and low frequency air molecule spread more thinly. So you would be able to see um, this would be uh, the area where the uh, uh, this would be the area where the pressure is higher. La. But uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, Frequency is a, a, always about how many waves in one second. So as you can see, this is more wave, uh, you know, one, two, three, four in one second compared to this one, only one and two. So basically this would be a higher frequency and this is lower frequency and lower pitch. La. Okay. So sound intensity. Sound intensity or amplitude is the loudness. Um, intensity would be usually at the Y axis. La. This will usually is the X axis and loudness. Loudness is in dB. Or amplitude is the loudness or the volume of the sound. So more specifically, intensity is the rate of energy flow through an area. High amplitude are interpreted as high volume and expressed with reference to sound perceived by the ear, the acoustic level, with the reference to fixed electrical power level. So because the sound is, I mean, the volume is actually uh, talking about the energy flow. Uh, 
that is why uh, in the video player, you can actually tune out, you know, make it uh, higher in amplitude by supplying more power supply. Okay. So sound intensity in dBm. So this would be the formula. P would be the intensity and P0 would be the threshold of hearing. Digital audio processing. Working with audio means working with sound wave, uh, which means sound wave is actually signal, uh, sort of 1D signal. So all electronics audio system are based around one very simple concept. So take sound wave, the acoustic energy, convert them uh, into electrical current and manipulate them as desired, which is uh, analog uh, to digital. Okay, uh, analog to digital converter. So convert back them to sound wave. So DAC. Okay, so this is always happen. Uh, uh, only these three steps whereby you have a sound wave. So you pick up the sound wave and call, because you want to process the sound wave, so you convert it to um, and digital. So you have ADC uh, analog to digital sound converter. And then later on, after you process, you convert back to analog. So convert back to analog will be DAC, uh, digital to analog converter. So this is the um, basic, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the basic uh, steps. So first of all, you have analog sound wave, and then you convert ADC analog to digital converter. So you process it. After you process it, you convert back to DAC, uh, digital to analog converter, and then play the video, uh, sorry, play the audio. So sound properties would be uh, the frequency or the pitch loudness or the ampli uh, amplitude or the intensity. Um, frequency specification, format channel, and sample. Audio specification. Audio specification would be the, the format would be, what is the format of this audio? And the channel would be dual channel, uh, triple channel, or quadro channel. Uh, I will explain this later on. Sample will be the sample size, sampling data. So some way click on continuous wave. Sound is always analog, uh, so that is why it has a continuous value as opposed to district one. District one would be digital, like digital always district. To use a digital version of sound wave, digitized representation of audio information must be in performed. Must be performed, should be performed. So any conversion is low C, uh, analog to digital, uh, analog. Uh, conversion is Lucy, Lucy, which means uh, it's this. I mean, not all the information is being uh, uh is being converted. Uh. Some information might be lost during the conversion. So for synthetic data, uh, uh sorry, synthetic music, uh, MIDI, only the A conversion is involved. So let's see. Uh, analog sound, pressure wave. Okay, bits and bytes. When we deal with the digital, world, we always deal with bits and bytes. Uh. So I will easily remember one byte represent eight bits. Uh. So byte would be reflect your size. Uh. And for analog, we always deal with a uh, natural wave, which is a continuous uh, sinusoidal. Depends on what wave is it, uh. not a sinusoidal, but uh, a continuous wave. Uh. But for digital, it would be district. So this would be the AD, AD, which means uh, analog to digital conversion, and DA, digital to analog conversion. So you have your sound wave, which is a uh, continuous waveform, convert to voltage, and then from the bit. This would be the digital. And for this one, you have bit convert back to voltage and convert bit, uh, back to sound. So these two are digital, and this is analog. Okay? So this is... um. Yeah, quite quite simple. Uh. Digital audio is one is the sound or speech analog that convert a digital form using ADC. Ad ADC encoder, which means the analog to digital converter. The encoder will sample the analog before quantize it into a district and digital signal. So first of all, you need to perform the sampling. So sampling of data is always important. Uh. No matter in what scale is it, the sampling of data is always important. Because the sampling of data will directly affect um, the raw material. For example, I want to sampling, you know, I want to perform sampling. Or oh, how many students able to, uh, okay. For for example, I want to perform a sampling data. How many uh people uh 
uh, has COVID. So I go to the hospital, COVID patient ICU ward and ask, do you have COVID? Do you have COVID? Do you have COVID? And now I, I found that, oh, 100% people got COVID. That is not true because the sampling of data is performed at the wrong, wrong pace. So if let's say I randomly sampling, okay, I go to KLCC and then I uh, start sampling. Or oh, have you been uh, diagnosed with COVID? Something like that. Uh, then would be a bit okay. La. But you need to uh, justify your sampling uh, size sampling uh, rate and etc. So the same happen happens here. So if let's say you have a continuous wave, uh, you know, a very big continuous wave, but you only perform four sampling. Let's say we cut it into four parts. Uh. So you have one point here, one point here, one point here, and one point here. So after you perform the sampling, you will get one point, one point, one point, one point. So this would be your data. And it is totally different from this one. So this is so-called the uh, uh, under sampling, la, which is you 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 directly uh, cor corrupt the entire raw data. So this is what we really don't want. La. So if let's say uh, next time you are doing a research, uh, especially in audio processing uh, or signal processing, the sampling is very, very crucial. If your sampling is uh, is not solid enough, uh, your entire research will corrupt, okay? So this is analog to digital converter. Um, you have your band limiting filter. Band limiting filter is actually to limit a specific uh, bandwidth. Uh, we only want to mine, I mean, uh, we only want to uh, perform mining for a specific uh, range of data. We don't want everything uh, being included. So later on, you have a sampling clock and the sampling is whole and quantizer, uh, quantizer is something, Quantization will be mentioned over here, like I will mention later on. So quantization is actually uh, to, you know, you have a sound wave like that. So you quantify the data. So we have two different terms, uh, qualitative and quantitative, right? So qualitative is which means, oh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, 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 okay, this advance is very beautiful. So quantization is that, because beautiful is a very qualitative word. Sir. I think this one is very nice, but maybe uh, another people may, may think this one is too big, too small, and this and that, something like that. So it is very qualitative. So I need to quanti uh, quantify it. So I would say that, oh, the merits for this uh, was uh, maybe it's 0 0.7. So everyone know. So this is so-called uh, quantization, uh, for example, she is very tall, uh, she is very tall. So how tall is tall? So we need to quantize that, oh, she is uh, 190 cm, or oh, then very tall. So uh, she is uh, 160, uh, not so tall, uh, but you, if you are comparing with the dwarf, uh, so it's very tall. Uh. So that is why tall, short, those terms are qualitative. But in terms of uh, uh, to process something else, uh, we need something to be quantified. So that is why we give something a numerical value like, at least. So. Uh, she is 190 cm, uh, he is 160 cm, something like that. So that is what quantization here doing. So you have your signal like this one, so you quantify each of the signal, giving a district value rather than a continuous waveform. So you will get your uh, digitized uh, code words. But nonetheless, uh, we are not going to explain uh, very, very in-depth uh, because uh, actually when you deal with uh, digital world, we're always dealing with one and zero only. Okay, but we will not go until that level. We will learn, uh, you know, what would be the possible process over there. But I will not explain until how you get one and zero. As like the JPEG, uh, we are just, you know, some surface information only. Uh, if you want to go deep down, you should have all the Huffman coding table, uh, all, all those kind of table, and it's involve a lot of data extraction. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, for this subject, we are, um, trying to learn the basic uh, algorithm or basic theory in terms of multimedia management, okay? We are not going in depth until that level. That would be under the uh, field of computer science. Okay, sound card. So sound card is the most basic element of a digital audio workstations. A sound card can provide input jack of microphones and external audio sources. So basically, sound card would be the one who manage your audio jack in and jack out. So uh, you have your speaker, you know, you have your different 
uh, earpiece, you know, no matter you connect via Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or maybe a, a cable. So uh, the, the, the part or the component who manage the uh, input, output, the I-O connection is the sound card. Okay, so convert sound from analog to digital, digital forms as it is being recorded using ADC, provide output jack up for headphones and external speaker. So you can provide uh, the output uh, jack towards the, I mean, the big speaker as well. Uh. Convert sound from digital to analog form as it is being played, use a DAC. Basically, ADC and DAC um, is very common terms in terms of uh, audio processing. Uh. Okay. So synthesize uh, MIDI sound sample. So this is the example of um, sound card. So in sound card, you would, uh, I mean, I, I'm not sure if you all know, uh, when you purchase uh, the headphone or what, uh, you would observe that the jackpot, they have three different lines. Some have two lines, you know. Uh, usually it would be in blue, green, uh, pink, and also green color, uh, usually. Uh, else, uh, you might have two different jets. And one is in green color and one is in pink color, for example. So different lines would have different uh, meaning. Uh, if, let's say you have only two lines, uh, for, for sure that one is not capable to get your audio. Uh, uh, only provide you the uh, sound. Okay. So if you want to have you know all, all these three, uh, for example, your Apple or Samsung or Huawei, uh, ear jack, I mean, with the cable, uh, you can observe usually there is three lines, uh, which means you can use that one to speak, to listen, and to record. Usually speak and listen, uh, two way. Uh, okay. If you only have two lines, uh, which means uh, usually it is meant for you to listen only. Don't have any built in mic over there. Okay. So that would be, but sometimes it would be separate, uh, three different lines. Uh, okay. But some combine all into one. Okay. So um, yeah, that, that is the uh, sound card, uh, what the sound card is doing. Uh. Digitizations, which is conversion to a stream of number, preferable, preferably integer. Uh, most, mostly, uh, no matter in image processing or audio processing, we are actually um, processing the things in integer instead of, integer instead of the uh, flood number. Although we have flood number, but usually we will round off, la, round off to become an integer. So, Rounding off the number to become an integer, this would introduce noise as well. But then the less this noise would be negligible. Okay, for example, 0 0.5, you uh, round off to become one because one is better, I mean, easier for the system to process and etc. For example, you don't have 0, 100 0.7, you, you don't, don't have 100.7, but rather you in input, I mean, you round off to become 101 uh, intensity. But 101 and what? I mean, 100.7, that would be a difference of 0 0.3. So if, uh, of course, it is not so significant, but if let's say a lot of, I mean, all the pixels having such an issue, uh, you might see some noise in your input image, something like that. So to digitize the signal, it should be sampled in each dimension, time and amplitude. So to sampling the data is like, you know, uh, I want to, uh, I want to, mimic the original analog. So in order to mimic this, uh, you have to sampling the data in two different dimension. Um, not really dimension, uh, but two different exit, uh, you know, like the Cartesian plan. So you can sample in the time domain and the amplitude domain. So you would have this kind of graph, uh, okay? To uh, later on, you will get, you know, sort of this waveform, something like that. Uh. So sampling, measure at, measure at evenly spaced time interval. For sampling is always measured in a uh, evenly spaced time interval. For example, I want to perform four sampling in one second. One second. So for sure, the interval would be the same. Oh, this is not really the same. Okay, so let's say you, you need to perform four sampling in one second. Uh, so you have four parts. Uh. One, two, three, four. Okay, so the sampling interval must be the same and it is, uh, I mean, divided equally. Uh, okay, uh, it's not possible for you to do something like, you know, one, two, three, 
the link one, two, three. Uh, it's not possible where you have uneven spacing. Uh. So, uh, yeah. So sampling rate, the rate that the rate at which the sample are taken, the rate is actually like um, how many sample you take in one second. Uh. If you have better, I mean higher rate, uh, which means you get higher sample. Uh. So, um, and as I mentioned before, if you want to get higher sample, the more accurate data it is, but the uh, greater the size, the uh, I mean uh, the digital uh, audio file required uh, because you need more space to store more data. So typical sampling rate would be eight kilohertz or 8,000 sample per second to 48 kilohertz, okay? So which means uh, you have 8,000 sample in one second. Okay, so this is the uh, normal sampling rate until 48,000 sample per second. Okay, so if you uh, want to sample something more than 48, it's okay as well. Uh, just that I'm not sure is it necessary to do so. You have to evaluate, depends on your applications. So the human ear can hear about 20 hertz, a very deep rumble to as much as 20 kilohertz. Above this level, we enter the range of ultrasound. So we are unable to listen ultrasound. Uh, uh, I hope you all know what uh, ultraviolet, ultrasound, all this ultraviolet we cannot see, ultrasound we cannot see, something like that. Okay, so the human voice can reach approximate four kilohertz, and we need to bound our sampling rate from below by a uh, by at least of double this frequency. I remember some one of the very funny, very funny event is that uh, uh, because previously I work in the semiconductor industry, uh, so I evaluate the light source, so. There is one light source using UV light, and I'm not, I I I I'm not sure why. I I I've been you know playing around the UV light a, quite a time. I know that is a UV light source, but I'm playing around very long, and I say that oh, I think this one is uh broken down. Uh, why? Uh? I said there's no light. <laughs> that was very dumb. Uh, as I tell you, you know, I I know that is the ultraviolet light source, but I'm telling people that oh, this one broken down. And people, when people ask me why I said it is no light, that <laughs> very embarrassing. So please uh, be assured that you know what you are talking like, okay? So like, yeah, that is very embarrassing. But then later on, uh, if you, I mean, in order to know if that black source is broken down or what, uh, you have to connect with the table and then you use the camera lens to detect it. So uh, for sure, if you have, uh, you know, sort of your, your dye is here, maybe, you know, your dye, your light source, your UV light source. And this would be the lens uh, somewhere around here. Actually, not something like that. Uh. The light source should be at the real, at the side view. For example, this is the UV light, UV light. So this is your lens. So your lens should be able to observe. Uh. So from the, from the computer vision, uh, you will be able to see this one, uh, the, see this dye. Uh. So to, uh, to know if this is okay or not. Else you can try using the IO, try using the IO. So yeah, that is the dumbest question I ever asked. Okay, and I still, you know, apply the form and con complain that this device is condemned already. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, always remember ultrasound we cannot hear, ultraviolet we cannot see, okay? But uh, the ultraviolet is very, um, it's very hazardous. Uh, which means uh, you, if you're exposed to ultraviolet too long, you may get skin cancer. That is the most common uh, things, uh, uh, most common, I mean, the easiest way to get skin cancer. So for, for, for those exposure, I don't know, you really like, you really like a lot of things. You really like, uh, of course, you really like can kill bacteria, but uh, you really like can promote uh, aging, skin aging, and etc. So that is why when a specific region of skin uh, or the skin cell, um, each very quickly, so you you may cause mutations, and the mutation may cause skin cancer. Okay, so that is the reason why, uh, and also ultrasound as well. Ultrasound is used in uh mammogram for uh, for breast cancer imaging. Uh, do uh, and of course ultrasound is used to scan the baby, uh, and many other uh, uh applications. Uh. So the human voice can reach approximately four kilohertz, and we need to bound our sampling rate. The sampling rate from below by at least double this frequency. Let me remove this first. Thus, we arrive at a useful range of 
8 to 40 or so kilohertz. Okay, same thing in the amplitude or voltage dimension is called quantization. So quantization is not sampling in terms of uh, time uh, because we have two different uh, uh, exit, uh, you know, you have X exit and Y exit. So uh, we have to, uh, of course, uh, because most of the time we will mix up the word wording, uh, but actually they, they are specific wording for specific uh, purposes. Uh, for example, we don't say, sound is analog, uh, audio is digital. Uh, we don't use sound audio, something like that. You know, we don't make something like that. And actually sampling is always referring to time domain, which means uh, when you mention the word sampling, you're actually uh, doing uh, in conjunction of time taken, no matter one second, uh, how many samples you want to take, that's all. But you, if you mention the word quantization, uh, you are actually talking about the amplitude you will never say quantization in terms of time domain. It's not possible, okay? And you will never say sampling in terms of amplitude. That is not possible, okay? So always remember, when we talk about sampling, we always talking about the time domain. And when we talk about quantization, we always talking about the amplitude, okay? So always remember this one. And we have two different dimensions where X and Y exit. So the X exit will be the time domain and the Y exit will be the amplitude or the loudness, okay? So uh, sampling is the analog digital in the time dimension, we call it as sampling. Quantization is the sampling, the analog digital in amplitude dimension. Although I use the word sampling here, uh, because I can't really think another alternative word uh, to mention, to bring the meaning of sampling. Uh. Actually, I want to, what I want to mean here is that quantization is the keywords that we use when we do sampling in terms of amplitude, okay? So for this one, we don't call it as sampling, uh, we call it as quantization. Uh, and for time domain, we call it as sampling, okay? So parameter in the digitization of audio data. So you have a uh, sampling rate and frequency and quantization level, the number of discrete num level of uh, amplitude. Sampling, actually for this one, is actually uh, referring to time domain. Uh, and this is the amplitude. Uh. Okay. Mm. All right. I think that's all for today. I will start the Nyquist theorem in next chapter in, in next lecture because I need to explain this in a continuous flow. Okay. Before we end, any questions? Okay. If none, then uh, later on, uh, four thirty lah, four thirty tutorial. Okay. Uh, I, I will start by tutorial two first uh, because last time we let my complete the uh, then we I think we already complete tutorial three right so we start tutorial two and then tutorial four five okay that's all for today thank you